right thing in the world. I'm actually going to walk down the aisle. I have never seen anything quite so beautiful. Freeze! You're under arrest. What's wrong? Sam is... Uh, he's delayed, honey, just for a bit. Will Sam make it to the church on time? <laughs> what happened to you? Another world. The biggest problem I've had in my dental practice has been trying to help denture wearers. They can't eat the foods they like, and they're afraid they'll be embarrassed by their loose teeth. Dental implants have given me a way to help people that couldn't be helped before. Dental implants can replace or stabilize loose dentures. They cost about the same as capping teeth, and they're easy to use. If you've had this kind of problem, help is now available. Call the number on your screen and find out what dental implants can do for you. I'm Dr. Rod Mayberry. During your last eye exam, you probably got a phoropter evaluation. But did you get a computerized vision test? A health check for glaucoma and cataracts? At Eye Exam 2000, you do. Eye Exam 2000 has 20 tests and checks, 20 procedures that add up to one of the most thorough eye exams you can get. Thoroughness is Eye Exam 2000. Eye Exam 2000, next to Precision Lens Crafters, Fashion Place Mall, now in Ogden City Mall, lower level near the bond. When you can't be there, KUTV Sports brings it all home. Don't miss the UTEP Miners as they take on the BYU Cougars Saturday at 3, only on KUTV Sports. Come on home, Love, I'll be there. Oh, that was just great, Countess. That was just terrific. You know, I've been in this business a long time. I've seen them come and I've seen him go, and you're definitely on the way to the top. Thank you, Will. Good luck to you. You know, the great thing about having your own show is I'm kind of like a star maker. I can give young talent their big break, and that's what our show today is all about, that first big break. Next! Hi, Mr. Schreiner. Hey, kid. What's your name? What do you do? My name is Elliot, and I do an Ethel Merman impression. Oh, you do? Well, listen, I... Ooh, thanks for coming in, but that's really, I don't know, it's not really the kind of stuff that our show likes. Uh, may, it might appeal to some people, but not our audience. Some people can get a thrill <laughs> Knitting sweaters and sitting still That's living for some people for Whoa, 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 hold it. I'm sorry, huh? kid. There's nothing I can do. You may have a future out there, but I gotta be honest, I, I, I can't, I don't know what to tell you. I, it's exciting, but it's entertaining, but what I like on this show is funny. I love Funny. Funny. You're a man who likes children. Stop. stop. Please stop. Hold it. I'm working. I am a busy man. Listen, don't, don't call me. I know, Mr. Schreiner. I'll call you. No, no, no. Don't call us. We'll call you. That's, I don't think you got it right. Some people may think what you do is swell, but for me... You'll be swell. You'll be great. Gonna stop. have stop. a whole world. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Get out now. Will you please just get out? Get out. <laughs> Well, it's like they say, there's, there's no business like show business. There's no business like show business like no business. I'm sorry. Like it's no my mistake. I should have known better. I apologize. Security? Security? Somebody want to get him out of here? From rags to riches, Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles. Persistent pays for recording star, Billy Vera. A lucky break for Mama's family's Alan Kaiser. Overnight sensation from Frank's place, Don Yeso. And a little girl with a big future, Countess Vaughn. study and came back a star, Will Schreiner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi there. Thank you. What a great looking audience today. Hello, and our show today is all about big breaks. You know, you can, you can have talent. You can have good looks and great people behind you, but it still takes a big break to become a star. When that opportunity comes, you have to be ready. That's why we put together a list that might help you know if you're ready for stardom. Okay? Have I set it up clearly? 
Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you know you're ready for stardom when? Your favorite letter in the alphabet is I. <laughs> Keep in mind that these are joke uh, <laughs> items. Put that in the back of your head. You know you're ready for stardom when you haven't said, I'm sorry, for at least 10 years. <laughs> you know you're ready for stardom when you associate with more than five guys named Murray. <laughs> you know you're ready for stardom when you can only make love to a camera. You know you're ready for stardom when you look upon your great aunt's funeral as a photo opportunity. <laughs> you know you're ready for stardom when you have Betty Ford on retainer. <laughs> you know you're ready for stardom when you're not a human, but you play one on television. <laughs> so these are some hints. They're just, these, actually, these aren't even jokes. They're like hints if you're ready for stardom. So, never mind. No, it's okay. We're gonna, we have a terrific show. It's all about the big break. So, when we come back, the great Don Rickles will join us and tell us about his first big break right after this commercial. Don't go away. <laughs> Of all the national brands, only Skippy has both high protein and less sugar. High protein and less sugar for your kids. Now that's good nutrition, straight from the heart. It's all gone, but now that I'm two, I think Mom made this heart just for you. Skippy, good nutrition, straight from the heart. I started work right after I got my degree. Eventually, I put everything on hold and started a family. Ask my daughter what I do, and she'll say, Mom makes orange juice. That's not so easy. This is 100% pure juice. We don't add sugar. We don't add preservatives. We don't add anything. And that's what being select is. It's not just some name on a box. I wouldn't let it be. Kathy Brown makes Citrus Hill Select for your family and for hers. Utah, we are so damn that we're together. Utah. There's not a state we know that can compare with Utah. Of all the places in this world, Utah, we're living in Utah. Yeah, yeah. Utah, we love your city like San Utah, we found a place for show is all about the big break, about knowing when you're ready for stardom. And you know you're ready for stardom if you refer to your family as the extras. <laughs> Where were you in the beginning of this? You've had so much, you know you're ready for stardom, you've had so much plastic surgery, you look like Mr. Potato Head? <laughs> sure, now, now you come around. Well, it's a wonder my first guest ever got a big break since he probably insulted the guy who gave it to him. Here he is, a nice big warm welcome for Mr. Warmth, Mr. Don Rickles. Don. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Don, for being here. I, I'm truly a fan. I love uh, what you do, and, uh, and what is it that you do exactly? Well, uh, <laughs> to be very honest, uh, I come over here, I happen to be standing on the boulevard, and a guy grabbed me and said, come on in a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There's some guy that's on at 10 in the morning in Iowa, 3 in the afternoon in Duluth, <laughs> and 7.30 in Yokohama, so I said, I'll, I'll kill a half hour. <laughs> Now, since this is our show about big... Do you remember your first big break? This. <laughs> <laughs> 
This is what did it for me. I've been on a lot of shows, Will, and I've seen a lot of sets. Chip in. <laughs> this is... This is Mickey Mouse cardboard you have here. Lean back in the chair, I can get a drill job. <laughs> my first big break, I, I you know, I, I had a lot of opportunities in my career. You know, you, you guys came out of college in Indiana with a harmonica and you got hot, you know. And... <laughs> Your father, rest his soul, left you a great heritage, and unfortunately, you didn't pick it up. <laughs> but uh, I came from nowhere. I started in uh, a lot of joints, as they say in those days, there were no improvs, and it was tough. But my biggest opportunity, I think, came in, uh, in uh, Florida. It first started in a place called Murray Franklin's. A guy called Murray Franklin gave me a big break there, and people started to come and see me. And then uh, I came to California with a lot of stops in between. I don't want to tell you my whole life story because the crowd will get emotional. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, the sets would be changing. And I heard some of the jokes you used, so why compete with a real funny guy? <laughs> I love the senior citizens in the front. <laughs> no napping. <laughs> <laughs> Two of the ladies were nodding off during this whole <laughs> Oh, God bless you, ladies. Good to see you. And the other woman's seeing if she got rolled. <laughs> but now, wait, no, you went on. The, wasn't the Tonight Show a big, a big break for you at some point? Yeah, I, I, I gave Carson a shot in the arm, and uh, <laughs> no, Johnny was very influential in helping me. At some 25 years ago, I went on his show in New York, and uh, he had seen me in a place called the Elegant, where I started in Brooklyn, and uh, his people uh, had me on the show. And from there, I, <laughs> I just became very, very big. And now, as <laughs> As things slow down, I'm here. <laughs> Fighting to get back on top. No, but the Carson show has been a, was a great influence, a great help to me. Where did you develop, though, the, the style that you used? The, the uh, what would you call Meeting it? Meeting guys like you. Uh. <laughs> guys that annoyed me, you know what I mean? People with your kind of personality, Midwest, Wonder Bread, you know, with baloney, you know. Just sitting around in the living room in your underwear saying to the wife, why not? <laughs> I don't know what that means, but me, I, I, I got that style talking to the audience. I really didn't have an act. I used to do like that young man at the beginning of the show. You know, I used to do, he, I, he did Ethel Merman badly. <laughs> but uh, I did Clark Gable and uh, uh, Barry Fitzgerald and all these different people. And, and I told bad jokes. I could never tell a joke. And suddenly I started to talk to the audience. And from there, things started to get better. It was dangerous <laughs> in those days. But, and I made fun of people and what their backgrounds were. And, I used to have a fast bike, Red Cross, and my mother outside saying, he's a wonderful boy. <laughs> uh, the, well, the audience keeps looking up. Is there a bird loose in here? Oh, they're looking at the monitors. I, I didn't know that. I, I said, the whole audience is like this. I thought we're at an airport, and I'm Lindbergh. <laughs> but, uh, what, well, what advice would you have for a young comedian wanting to get I'd the Get a good break? job, a good day job in a store. <laughs> Forget about it. I think you know that, Will, with your success, too, of being a young man in the business and very successful. I think the, the best advice is you have to really be dedicated. That was very both... sincere. Yes, it was. <laughs> now we'll get back to honesty. You stick. <laughs> I like that. I'll tell you what you like. <laughs> anyway, uh, there's no voting, Will. Just listen to what I say, okay? <laughs> Read the notes and find out who I am and why I'm here. <laughs> And then tell me why I did it. <laughs> but I must say, uh, I, I think you've got to be very dedicated. You have to believe. And, and I think, uh, as Milton Berle always used to say, when I, he was my idol when I was a kid, I, he always said to me, and I think that's so true, you have to be uh, an individual in the sense that have a complete style of your own. Don't copy anybody. Just be yourself and do something different than the next guy. And I think you've got a very good chance. Yeah, so setting yourself apart helps I think it. so. I think if you're just another guy that tells a joke, you know, like anybody else, you, you're in a rat race, but if you're different, as you, you know, you're different. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take a break and continue our show on The Big Break with more of Don Rickles and a whole lot more show right after this. Come on back. Why is this man being so unfair to his wife? Enjoying his cold relief while she suffers, feeling no desire to sneeze while she stifles hers, without all the coughs and the runny nose that torture her night, resting in the same bed where she tosses and turns. Why? Because while she took a cold tablet, he took NyQuil. 
And nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Now a new cherry flavor, too. Lilt makes curls so easy. Lilt makes body so easy. Lilt makes the difference so easy. Beautiful hair is easy with Lilt Home Perm, because sponge wraps make roll-ups foolproof for easy care hair. Lilt, Lilt. Lilt makes the difference so easy. A Wednesday's Child Special Sunday. He was convicted of sexually molesting his own two children, yet he got an extremely light sentence. Tonight at 6, you'll hear the shocking term imposed upon convicted Lehigh child sex abuser Alan Hadfield. Also tonight, you'll find out what happened when child killer Gary Bishop made a return appearance in court. You will hear some good news for the 14,000 Hill Air Force Base workers who were expecting to be furloughed. And you will meet a horse chiropractor and find out what he does. Those stories and much more tonight at 6 on KUTB News. We are back with Dr. Don Rickles, and uh, now, besides being a fine comedian, you're a fine actor. You graduated from the uh, what the American uh, Academy of Dramatic Arts with uh, some of the biggies: uh, Anne Bancroft, Grace Kelly, Jason Robots, a list of them. All, and all of them, when they hear my name, they go. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed when you were in Kelly's Heroes and Run yeah, Silent. Yeah, Clint Run. Eastwood. It was, it was great working with Clint. That's like being alone. <laughs> Clint's a great guy, but his idea of fun is a can of beer and a pickup truck and watching his dog get sick. <laughs> <laughs> and Tully Savalas in those days was single and was in constant heat with a cape. <laughs> and, uh, he was running around. And, and Donald Sutherland. And we were there for six months in Yugoslavia. Have you ever been to Yugoslavia? No, no, no. Well... <laughs> they should have bombed it. <laughs> anyway, uh, you no, know, in those days it was very difficult. The location, you know, out in the woods and so forth, and Clint loved that. I'm used to marble toilets and all these other guys, you know. <laughs> give them a barrel and a sign and they're happy, you know. Now, will you ever go back and, and act some more? Sure I will, but <laughs> studios haven't been over the house too often. <laughs> but, no, it, the, the very difficult part is to get the right part and to do the right situation. You know, just to act, when you're a working comedian, you, naturally, that's, that's my main forte, and I love acting, but if the right part came, I would, uh, I would jump at it. And yeah. so far, you know, I've, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, I fool with the wife a little bit, you know. <laughs> She said, do you have a minute? I'm not shining the jewelry. Come over here. <laughs> now, what's it like around your house? How do, you, how do your kids react to you? Do you give them a hard time all the time? No, no. My kids are usually at, uh, pulling bank holdups. <laughs> <laughs> now, my daughter goes to USC. My son's going to be a director. They're very, very happy. They once in a while say hello to me in the house, but they're, <laughs> they're just the average kind of kids. Nothing special. My wife's kind of special. You know, she's the, you know, the real, you know, I said, gee, I had a great opening, and she said, isn't that exciting? <laughs> I mean, you throw dirt on her and she'll refuse to die. She will not. <laughs> just a quiet, layback woman. On the wedding night, she just went, is that about it? <laughs> That's the kind of girl she is. Uh, do you find, are you a romantic? I mean, at home? Yeah, and... yeah. I usually sit in my bathrobe in the living room and she'll go, blah, blah. <laughs> And she goes, isn't that romantic? <laughs> but she wears a sleek nightgown. No, she's a very layback lady. Very uh, unshow business-like. And yet... Uh, my picture agent, Jack Gilardi, uh, she worked for him for six years. That's how I met her. I came to the office. This is true. I, at that time, it was GAC. And I came to the office, and I said, I'd like to see Mr. Gilardi. And she said, what is it in regard to? I said, I want to sell meat. I'm a butcher. <laughs> and she did what you did. <laughs> and then I had a romancer and kisser, you know what, for about six months. And then I went to Philadelphia to see her house, and it was two stories. And I leaned over to my mother, as the soul, and said, I think we fell into money. <laughs> And I found out she was poverty-stricken and worked the Navy Yard <laughs> with the fleet. <laughs> but you, were, you, were, you're 30, you weren't married till you were 38 years 38 old. 38 years old. I used to lock myself in the bathroom and hum a lot. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> now, you, now you know what you're talking about. 
Yeah, I was 38. Well, I went out with a lot of girls. Satunya and a snake. Uh, <laughs> Sally and her bird. The Weezer and the Scorpion. You know, and those who I worked in strip joints many, many years ago. And those are the kind of people I met, you know. And I always, I always uh, fell in love with a singer. If I worked with a singer, a girl singer, I always immediately, boom, that was it for me. So when I met my wife, I said, do you sing, hum, or dance? She said, no. I said, definitely we'll be married. <laughs> Because I don't need no time. And I don't get up in the morning and think of showbiz like some guys get up in the morning, you know, and it's all show business. I don't. I, I get up in the morning and say, I'm up. <laughs> Just look around and I have a big estate with hunting dogs. <laughs> uh -huh. it takes a lot of years. You won't have it with this show. I'm going to show you. <laughs> We're talking about big breaks. Now, my next guest says that the only good thing about smoking is that it got him his big break because uh, I guess he was smoking. Please welcome from Frank's place, Shorty LaRue himself, Don Yesso. Don? <laughs> That, that uh, what smoking was responsible for your your big break? Yeah, that's about the only good thing that came out of it, unfortunately. But uh, I was on a flight from Los Angeles to New Orleans, and uh, Hugh Wilson, who's the executive producer of the show, come fidgeting down the aisle, and I uh, happened to see my cigarette sitting next to me, and uh, he asked me if I could buy my cigarette from him. I said, sure. So he sat down, and the uh, stewardess came up, and she asked if we wanted a cocktail, and he said, sure. So uh, after about six or seven scotch and waters and talking about New Orleans, he says, uh, you know, I don't know if I can work this out. He said, you think you might be interested in being in a TV series? I thought about it about 10 seconds. And then, <laughs> thank God I had my seatbelt on because it went right through the aluminum or whatever and things. Like that. And I said, sure, why not? I got nothing else to do. <laughs> so you, you had no acting experience. You're just on a flight. This guy says, I'm a producer. You fall for it. Uh <laughs> Well, I wasn't worried about any casting couches. He was a dude, you know, so... <laughs> so, now, so now, weren't you worried, though? I mean, all of a sudden he says, hey, I'm going to put you in a show and you have no experience. Do you run out and take some acting lessons, or...? No, uh, after I came to California and uh, I read for the network, which is, was a frightening experience, uh, it was about 5.30 on a Friday afternoon. They were starting production for the pilot Monday morning at 8 o'clock. And they called me and said, congratulations, you got the role. And I thought, I said, oh, what am I doing? I got the Monday morning to learn how to act. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> So I went out and bought me three acting books. And, uh, <laughs> and the first two, I couldn't even read. There were about two dudes I couldn't even pronounce their names. <laughs> so I threw those on the side, and I finally found one I could understand. I was acting in front of the camera. So I read that from cover to cover, and... Uh, in you go? <laughs> yeah, so I went on out there, and it was eight days of my life that I was totally petrified. You know, uh -huh. I had no idea what I was doing. Well, now, but how do you develop the comedy? I mean, you walk on the set the first day. Are, did you just kind of have confidence? I know what I'm doing, or in the back of your head, you're just panicking? No, when we had the first production meeting, uh, they introduced everybody, and there was about 60 people, I guess, at the meeting, and I was, I was sitting at the end of the table, and I was trying to hide. And they introduced me, and they said, uh, and this is Roy Yeso. I didn't say anything. And uh, so Hugh takes back over, and he says, well, first of all, I'd like to say, this is Don Yeso. I said, hey, y'all could call me Platypus. I don't care. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> And uh, so they kind of broke the ice, and after the meeting, the whole, all the cast came on over and said, well, listen, if you need any help with anything, you know, just uh, give us a call or something if you need any help with your line. And I was at a real vulnerable point that if, uh, if they'd been real critical of what I was doing on the show, uh, I'd have just been broken. But they, were, they gave me a bunch of attaboys and, man, you're doing okay, and, you know, we like having you on the show. So my confidence level started to build, and I finally I said, hey, I can do this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they went to series, they picked me up for series, and... Uh, I don't know, the rest is actually not going well. So now, well. yeah, the show's a big hit, you're doing well. Have you, have you moved out to, left New Orleans, moved out here to Los Angeles? Yeah, I moved out here permanently, hopefully it'll be permanently, uh, in July. And uh, I drove my car, I packed my stuff up in the car and left a little spot for me to sit in. And uh, <laughs> drove on out here and uh, I looked like the Beverly Hillbillies riding around town. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just had pots, pans, you know, just stuck in there everywhere I can fit. And uh, drove on out here and... Um, Slept on some sofas and stuff until I got a, a real re, uh, relocation check. And then I uh, went and found a place to live out here. Mm -hmm. What were you doing in New Orleans before this all happened? I was working on my second degree. I was going to be a high school coach. And uh, I got about 27 hours shy. I was going to, uh, uh, it was physical education and with a minor in health and nutrition. And I had a little deli, uh, kind of went to funk though. Um, I guess I didn't make real good sandwiches. But uh, I'm always afraid that the bill collectors are going to see me on one of these shows and come looking for me. <laughs> 
Well, this show is particularly popular with bill collectors. Yeah. So. Now, now do you, when you go back home, are all your friends now, or they, they change the way they deal with you now? Big Don, Mr. Big Hollywood, Mr. Big Shot? Or oh, they... no, as a matter of fact, they do try and run me around. This is Don, don't you know him? It's Shorty on the show. So I get a big kick out of it. We all have a lot of fun with it. No, no, no. Everybody's saying, my family's crazy. Uh, you know, I mean, my mother, I mean, Frank's place is her favorite show. So, uh, <laughs> so mine too. So, uh, uh, you know, I mean, and, and all, uh, the, she plays bingo, and, uh, I mean, it's 45 bingo ladies' favorite show. 45 ladies play bingo can't be wrong. <laughs> what do you find is the best, best thing about the break? How has it affected your life the most? I've had a lot of opportunity to meet a lot of uh, wonderful people, like Mr. Rickles. Mr. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to this guy. I don't want him to get on it. I know, he's, being, he's sitting there quietly behaving the, himself. The way you talk, I wouldn't stop with you. <laughs> Here. We'll continue our show on the big break with a star search winner plus a whole lot more right after this. Don't go away. Alan Kaiser from Mama Family and Billy Bear on the Beaters. This woman is losing weight. She isn't cutting back on sweets or starches, yet within three weeks she'll still have a significant weight loss. Her secret is Calban 3000. Look at the difference. Ordinary diet plans literally starve you. With Calban 3000, you can eat as much as you ate before, and you don't have to exercise yourself to death. Pounds of fat and flab will melt away and stay away. And best of all, you'll feel great. No loss of energy or stamina. No chemicals or dangerous drugs. Calban 3000 bonds with food, preventing absorption of much of your caloric intake. Your body burns fat and cellulite for energy. You lose pounds and inches. I tried everything, but Calban's the only thing that worked for me. I lost 50 pounds. I lost 62 pounds in three months. With Calban, I feel and look like a new man. I thought I'd never be slim again, but I lost 85 pounds and regained my youthful figure. If after three weeks you don't see a significant weight loss with no loss of energy, simply return the empty container for a full refund. Start Calban 3000 today. You have nothing to lose but fat, flab, and cellulite. Call 1-800-638-1500. Three-week supply, just $19.95, plus $2 shipping and handling. Or order a six-week supply for only $38.95. Call now, 1-800-638-1500. Use your MasterCard, Visa, or American Express and save the COD fees. That's 1-800-638-1500. Some say the only way to make a bag of tasty, ridgy Ruffles potato chips any better is to make it bigger. Bingo. What happens when every bag of Lay's potato chips has more crisp, irresistible chips than before? Jackpot. Ruffles and Lay's brand potato chips. Now you get more and more. After years of playing local clubs, my next guest finally made it to the big time with this song. Watch. Oh, 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 what do you think I would give at this moment if you'd stay? Kiss the ground that you walk on If I could just hold you again Please welcome Billy Vera. Now, you, now, your story is a great story because you were wor you've been working in, in music for, for a number of years. I, I know you've been performing in the L.A. area for all these years. Where was the, uh, the turning point? Well, I think um, the final thing happened, the final thrust, so to speak, happened when uh, a guy came in to the club one night at my place, a place in Santa Monica, and uh, called me up a couple days later, said, I work for Family Ties. We want to use a song we heard you do at the show the other night, and he didn't know the name of it. And he hummed me a few bars, and I said, oh yeah, that's called At This Moment, and uh, you can call the publisher, and they got it on the show. I got a bag full of mail, 
and uh, what's the name of the song, who's the singer, where can we buy it? And there was no record out. The record had been out about, uh, about uh, five years previously. So I, I got mad. I said, uh, I got to get a, find a way to get this record out. So I went to all the big record companies, and they said, uh, go away. <laughs> and I finally ended up at a friend of mine was Rhino Records, Richard Foose, the president of Rhino. I said, Richard, I said, I think I got something we can sell here. We could, we could put together the old album, we could reissue it and maybe get it out in the market. So they did. And uh, about a year later, Family Ties used the song again. And this time, NBC got 9,000 phone calls. From the, from the one song? Yeah. yeah. It was, they said it was the most phone calls they'd ever gotten in the history of the network. And, except uh, when Don was on. Except I when think. Don was on the other time. Yeah. <laughs> except when Don was on. <laughs> Pass him down until somebody gets him. Yeah, yeah. That was Don when Don sang, I've been away from you a long time. I remember that. Yeah. Sonny, honey, honey, hey. hey. <laughs> Daddy, gosh, Swanee, sing it. Get up, Al. It's over. I want to be a jazz singer. <laughs> I'd get on with you, huh, Bill? I'm sorry. <laughs> as long as you I take it away, we got to sit here, and he and I are going bad on this couch. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of homie going on around here. This couch. Call the board of health. There's something coming out <laughs> so, so the song's a monster hit, and yeah, uh, it number one, and uh, it was great. Now, yeah. Tell me about the early days of your career. When you start, you started what? Writing songs. Start, I started writing, and singing in high school, like everybody else. You know that ever uh, post Chuck Berry. You know everybody wanted to be a guitar player. So I, I wrote a song that uh, Ricky Nelson recorded. I had this song that uh, I, I thought I was writing a song for Dionne Warwick. I said, Ah, great! This this new singer, Dionne Warwick. I'm gonna write a song for her. So I took it to the publisher. He said, Yeah, kid, it's a great song. Here's 50 bucks. We'll go in and we'll make a demo, and that was it. A couple months later, I said, I got your song recorded. I said, oh, yeah, great. Uh, Dionne Warwick? He said, no, Ricky Nelson. I said, what? <laughs> Ricky Nelson? You know, at the time, I didn't know that I'd make a lot more money with Ricky Nelson because he had the TV show, and they did the song five weeks in a row, and it was a hit. Somebody said you just started the band to meet girls. Well, that was, yeah. yeah later, <laughs> later when, the, when, the, when I came out here, uh, after a, a lull, let's say, in a career of about 10 years, Working Holiday Inns and, and it was terrible, you know? <laughs> when you're working in a Holiday Inn, are you thinking this is just a stepping stone to a Ramada Inn? Or, well, uh... I want to work up to the big hotel. It's a big time, yeah. Well, what keeps yeah. you going at that point? That's what I'm curious. When, when some people are frustrated in their career, what keeps them, or what kept you going at that point, saying, I know that one day it's going to work for me? Well, I used to use it as a classroom, you know? Uh, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of my contemporaries got on drugs and alcohol, and I've never, knock on wood, done any of that stuff. And uh, I used to say, well, what can I learn tonight? I take a situation like that, you know. These th there's three guys in the house, and they're traveling salesmen. There's one waitress and a bartender, and everybody's after the waitress. What, how can I use this, and how can I learn something about my craft? And I think that came, kept me halfway sane anyway. Yeah, and now, now your career's taken in many different directions. You've, you've moved into acting. Yeah, I, when I moved out here... Um, was that harder or easier than music, you think, to break oh, into? For me, it was easier, yeah. you know. Uh, I, I used to write songs with, with a guy named Chip Taylor who wrote Wild Thing, Angel of the Morning. And his brother is John Voight, who uh, subsequently became a well-known actor. And uh, John and I, I ran into John out here when I first moved out. And uh, we were at a party, and I, and I was talking to him about changing um, some things about my singing performance. And I was describing it to him. He said, you know, you, you, you've, uh, you should be an actor. I said, John, come on. I'm a lousy saloon singer, you know? He said, come to this class. I've been going to this class for eight years. I'm telling you, you'd get it. And he dragged me down there, and I, and I was in awe. I mean, there were some great people. Uh, and uh, I was scared to death. And finally, after about a year, I, I started to understand a little bit of what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. Because Don's got a great book. He's got one book you can read. If you... <laughs> Acting made easy. No, this Don. Yeah. <laughs> I don't read. <laughs> So now you have a, a new movie coming out, which we have a clip of. Do you want to set, set up what we're seeing in this? Yeah, Baja, Oklahoma is the name of the movie. It's going to be on HBO. In fact, it's on HBO now as we speak. As we speak? It's yeah. like probably nobody's watching us because they're watching Baja, Oklahoma <laughs> on HBO. Or vice versa. Or nobody's vice versa. watching the movie and they're right, watching yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, this is a scene. Oh, wait, that's the movie you watch about 3 in the morning. You know, that's the, the one. When the yeah. wife's in a coma. <laughs> Now, because what do you, you want to see Leslie yeah. Ann Warren. Leslie Ann Warren? And what do you play in this? I play a, Leslie a, Ann Warren. I play Leslie Ann Warren. It's, it's <laughs> quite well, in fact. <laughs> she, I play a drunken, dope addict country singer who's uh, probably an expert. <laughs> Shut up, Rickles. <laughs>
You're lying, you bum. That's your life. That's your life. It's my scam. Come it's on. Your life. Your life. You gave us that. You don't touch it, and all your. I play a drunk and an alcoholic, and I'm, and I'm sniffing dope, and wow, what a movie. What a happy. You know, it's one of those things. Let it let it end. So tell us what we're going to see in this Snap scene. Snap out of it. <laughs> This, this is... kid passed away. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of an ex-boyfriend of hers, a friend of hers, uh, and, and, she, and I sing. And she's finally decided to write a song. She wants to be a songwriter. So she comes to me with one of her songs, and uh, it's, it's uh, not Stardust. Okay, let's take a look. Billy Vera in a movie called uh, Baja, Oklahoma, is it? Yes, sir. Baja, Oklahoma. I said I was a good songwriter. Are you lying? They're good. Songs are good, but they're imitations. They're songs about songs. If you're gonna get a song on somebody's album, you're gonna have to be more original. Why don't you go have to find your own voice? I'm sorry, Juanita. You said you wanted the truth. Billy Vera, that looks good. It was a short scene. Well. Continued success in all fields of endeavor. Thank you. Okay, we got to cut away. We'll be back with Alan Kaiser from Mama's Family right after this. Don't go away. What burns calories faster than jogging? What's easier than cycling? What's the number one fitness exercise in the world? It's cross-country skiing. Now, there's a cross-country skiing simulator that firms and tones the entire body and puts total fitness in easy reach of everyone. It's called Easy Glider, and it's the first ski simulator that's easy to afford. Just 20 minutes every other day. An hour a week is all it takes to strengthen and firm all major muscle groups and lose weight aerobically. Step on the glider pads, set the tension control for desired resistance, and you're off on a road to fitness as invigorating as a cross-country run. With Easy Glider, you'll burn up to 400 calories per workout, and you'll feel great. Your reward is total fitness, improved endurance and energy, weight loss, superior toning of chest, arms and back, calves, thighs, and buttocks. The smooth, fluid gliding action means there's none of jogging shocks or injuries. And unlike exercise bikes or jogging, all of your muscles get an efficient workout. Notice the quality construction of the sturdy metal frame. This handsome unit folds down quickly for easy storage. Other ski simulators give your wallet a workout because they cost as much as $500. But Easy Glider is just $59.95, and your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. Finally, the benefits of cross-country skiing are in easy reach with Easy Glider. Grab the bargain. Call toll-free now. To order your Easy Glider, call 1-800-922-6900. That's 1-800-922-6900. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check or money order for $59.95 plus $9 shipping and handling to Easy Glider, Department 226, Canton, Ohio, 44750. That's the Easy Glider, Department 226, Canton, Ohio, 44750. But for faster service, call 1-800-922-6900. Promotional consideration provided by... If you want sweet pickles made from country recipes, just try new Vlasic Country Classic Sweet Pickles. Look for them at your local supermarket. Clean carpets and upholstery with the Bissell Power Steamer. The Power Steamer shoots warm cleaning solution. Powerful suction pulls out liquid and dirt. Cleans upholstery too. Don't rent. Own your own Bissell Power Steamer. Dinty Moore Beef Stew, a hearty family favorite with chunks of beef, potatoes, and carrots. No preservatives and only 240 calories per 8-ounce serving. We're back with Doug Don Rickles, Don Yeso, and Billy Vera about that big break. Now, I guess luck plays a lot into it. I guess in, in your case, Don, luck was a, was a big factor. No, it wasn't luck. <laughs> Wasn't luck. I always had talent. Nobody ever watched. What do you know about? It? You're getting on my nerves. I didn't want to be on this show. Now it's luck. <laughs> Listening to him with his trumpet and this hit just made it overnight. No, I'm at the end of a couch. I'm a big name and it's not even clean. And you're telling me it's luck. Here's your luck. 
And the crew's looking around going, what, what, what happened? I don't need this. It wasn't luck, it was hard work. I skyrocketed with hard work. Not like him in the Holiday Inn. And I'm gonna tell those people you don't like their place. <laughs> I met a lot of broads in the Holiday Inn. There's nothing wrong with it. You heard of it? Yeah, well, I was great. I used to just stand by the door and now say, what now what do I do? Anyway. Uh, but, you, but you had it, you know, you've had... But you, but you, but you, but <laughs> you. Jew, you don't have to remind me. But you I said I'm a Jew, and three guys went, is that fun of them over there? <laughs> anyway. Uh... But you've had your ups, you've had your downs. How do you deal with those? That's a very clever statement. You've had your ups, you've had your downs, you've had your ups. What am I, a merry-go-round? Of course I had my ups and downs. But how I... do you deal with the down times? <laughs> I go on shows like this to pick myself up. <laughs> when I'm down, I get in the room, turn on the gas, and leave a note for the wife. Find me fast. <laughs> This show's gonna turn it around for you, I predict. It better, Will. Otherwise, you're gonna look funny back in Indiana swallowing a harmonica. <laughs> All right. Because this show is a bomb. I'm a friend. <laughs> this show isn't gonna make it. The whole crew keeps saying, Will's dynamite. I was backstage and heard the real whispers. How is he gonna stay on? I'm a friend. <laughs> With the funny glasses and the Wonder Bread face. Nobody knows what you are. You're not Italian, you're not Jewish, you're not Irish, you're nothing. You must take a bath and the water runs up. You're nothing. Billy's being nice, and Don, Don, snap out of here. Don don't believe he's got on his show. He was just hanging around in the street going, hey, who took my car? Hey, that ain't bad. You do that okay. you know, Are you kidding? I hung around with Boom Boom Mancini a lot of years. <laughs> and he's an actor, so you know that I have a skyrocketing chance. <laughs> no, you'll be great. You ought to do Hamlet. <laughs> you know, I tried to do. I tried to help a friend of mine out with, uh, with one of them uh, Shakespeare plays, The Merchant of Venice. Yeah, yeah. And I called the girl uh, Portia. I didn't know the name was supposed to be Portia. <laughs> you know, I realized that them, uh, them Shakespeare words just don't fit real well in my mouth. You know? yeah. But I, I don't know. I, you know. Maybe try Hamlet one yeah, day. Yeah, right? it better work than stealing first. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get my next guest out here. Who's yeah, bring the kid out. She's getting shorter. Wait in the back. <laughs> my next guest had success at an early age of 20. was his big break. Now, three seasons later, he's in the role of Bubba on Mama's Family. He's on his way up the Hollywood ladder. Let's take a look at him in action. A scene from Mama's Family right here. Let's just leave. She'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I can't just do that. Bubba, come on. We got people to impress. Is that all you care about? Impressing people? Well, yes. What else is there? <laughs> For one thing, feelings. What about Burnett in there? Bubba, if you are not in that Trans Am, by the time I count to three, I'm going to leave without you. <laughs> one. Two. <laughs> three. I guess you're going to have to make your big entrance without me. So long, Wanda Lynn. Please welcome Alan Kaiser. Alan? Good to see you. Now it's good to be seen. Thank you. You, <laughs> you got your big break at an early age. At what age? And uh, what yes, was it? What Yes, I was happened? very young and very stupid. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, I what happened was I was I was in Denver and I decided, uh, kind of you know on the spur of the moment, that I was going to move to Hollywood and become an actor. And I loaded everything I owned into a U-Haul trailer and came out here and slept on the floor of somebody's apartment. You know, same old story. And I came out and I I I was trying to make my way around and get, and get get to know some people and hang out a little bit. I was on Sunset Boulevard and one day I decided to go in and get a haircut and I walked in to this salon and met this gentleman owned the place and he started talking, you know, are you an actor? You know, you've got this look and this face and it was one, you know, in Hollywood you go in, every, you go into the dry cleaners and there's, you know, pictures of every star on earth, you know, and they're all signed and it was his hair salon and he obviously knew a lot of people so he sent me to an acting coach and I went down uh, to acting class uh, the first night and he said right off the bat he said uh, i think that you ought to meet an agent and uh oh, so right so away people me, are helping you yeah right away, they want right, you to the sign something night. they say just no, sign no, on no, a no. dotted line <laughs> <laughs> no he didn't, didn't have me sign anything but 
he, he called uh, an agent for me and made an appointment for me, and then he called our manager, Bud Robinson, and... Oh, don't and, say that. And, the, the, oh, sorry. Uh oh now Don's onto this. Uh -oh. We have the same manager. <laughs> <laughs> All fits in the place. <laughs> That was supposed to be. <laughs> so that essentially <laughs> was. <laughs> you know Bud Robinson. Now, isn't management important to your career, Don? <laughs> Not in this case. <laughs> so, so, you... so that was really the big break. I met with Bud and I met with the agent and I did a scene for him. I went up, was real nervous, did a little monologue in the office and everything. And they, they liked me and they liked my look or whatever. And they said, we're going to send you out on a on an audition and see what kind of report we get back on you. So they sent me out for the leading role in a feature film, and I got the role. First time out? And Yeah, first audition in Hollywood. And, um, and I got it. And from what was there the role? on out, <laughs> it, was, it was a guy named Jason. It was, you know, nothing to... It's nothing you want to brag yeah. about. <laughs> nothing you want to even mention, is that it? So yeah. <laughs> it was, the, movie? The, the movie is called Hot Chili. Yeah, Bud Robinson. <laughs> That's a Bud Robinson kind of job. Is <laughs> hey, this one of those movies? That, that you didn't need quarters to see this movie, did no, you? No. It's on videotape. It's on video, I know that. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, a, a what? An exploitation type no, movie? No, it's not an exploitation. Was there type nudity of thing. involved it's in this movie? Did you, did you grab her or anything like that? <laughs> oh, what happened? That, he's, humming, he's humming over here. Look at that. My legs going up. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's what they wanted me to do. I don't know. Wait a minute. Wait. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of those movies. Look at something on my leg. And he was Jason. Wow. <laughs> So, so, okay, so you do this movie. <laughs> yes, there was nudity. New, 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 new nudity to oh, answer your question. Think how we feel. <laughs> and, uh, and it came out, and, well, I don't even think it was released. I, I'm, I don't even know. You can't, it's hard to get the story on some, uh -huh. some of those things. So how has success changed you? Um, I, I think I've grown up a lot um, as far as, you know, professionally and, and learning to how to deal with people and... and uh, Meeting people and a lot of girls and coming around now. Kind of, they see you on the show. A lot of girls chasing you down. I know Billy is. You know Billy's got all these girls. Every, Billy's got the girls yeah, cornered. Yeah. I don't. I get his leftovers. <laughs> no. We got a deal. The, um, it's not that I'm not in a um, that much of a spotlight. You know, I mean, it, it's it's. Uh, I think I get recognized a lot. The show hasn't been on the air that long, and I I think I get recognized more so than I get recognized in people coming up to me and saying, you know, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. now, what is but your... a lot of, not, to answer your question, no, not a lot of no. girls right now. And how's the, the how's the, what does the family say about all this? Do they say, don't worry, don't let Hollywood change you? They try to keep you Oh, you, you know, they don't really lecture me a lot about, uh, you know, being careful and staying off of drugs and staying out of this and that and the other thing. They, uh, they're real supportive, and I think they trust me more than anything else. You know, I think that they, they gave me a lot of support when I came out, and and my parents are funny. They they you know, of course, now picked up show businesses as their hobby, and they're watching everything, and my mom says, oh, God, I saw this movie the other night, and you would have been perfect for the role. Well, I'm so mad. I'm going to write a letter, you know, and, and, and my, you know, my dad, too, and, and everybody's real supportive. i got to ask you about something in your bio. It says, in your spare time, you, you enjoy skiing, going to the beach, and spending time with your cat. <laughs> Uh, That's one of those bios. <laughs> well, I don't know. I have a cat, and you know, you spend a lot, <laughs> and then spend somebody a lot of time with your cat? He spends a lot of time with his cat, Alexis, and it comes around sounding real weird. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Go ahead. <laughs> That's your fun, Alan. God bless. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually have a... like moose. <laughs> Moose, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I just, I just, when I read these things, I have to ask. It's no, a, I spend a lot of, I have a cat at home, and, and I, I like spend a lot of time. A lot. I, you know, it's not it. like I sit down and I, you know, teach her dumb animal tricks or anything. All right. <laughs> you know, she can fetch, though, real good. I've taught her that, throw a piece of paper, and she brings it back. Well, continue I spend a lot of time on, you know, working on, I have a Jeep that I work on, and I listen to a lot of music. All right. Well, yeah. Tell them the real thing you do. We all sit, go down to the improv and hang out and all sit right. at Bud Robinson's table and look we for sit girls. At Bud Robinson's <laughs> table at the improv and we all look for girls. I think girls. that's the, the common real, thread here you know with success. <laughs> the common thread with success is it's just a lure to go to girls, right? That's to go all. after the girls. All right, we've got to take a break. We'll be right back. Come on back. Good. I have cough too. Fix it. 
Every day, mothers are called on to be doctors. Honey! And through the years, more mothers have relied on Robitussin than any other cough medicine because more doctors and pharmacists have recommended it. Mom, where's dinner? Robitussin, recommended by Dr. Mom. Which Robitussin is right for you? Ask your doctor or pharmacist. What is the World Tomorrow program? It analyzes news. It offers solutions to today's problems. It explains Bible prophecy. It's like no other program. Watch The World Tomorrow. The World Tomorrow is seen Sunday at 6.30 a.m. on KUTV2 together. Wednesday's children are looking for a home and family. Because everybody needs a mom and dad. I want to get adopted. It's being a family, and that's what I really want most important thing to me right now. Was it okay? You be our mommy and dad. <laughs> It'd be happy. Support the adoption of special needs children. Join KUTV for a Wednesday's Child Special and give your heart to a child Sunday night at 7. What does a splendid evening of gourmet meals and fun have to do with fighting birth defects? Everything. The March of Dimes Gala Gourmet March 19th to Little America promises to be the best ever. This one event makes research into fighting birth defects possible each year because of people just like you. Food, fun, and celebrities are all part of the excitement. And helping overcome all birth defects is the reason. Be a part of it this year. KUTV 2 together and the March of Dimes want to invite you to join us at this special event. Call the March of Dimes for more information. Double your pleasure with a look at twins tomorrow on Will. Hello there, we're back, and my next guest, Big Break, came just a few weeks ago. Watch this videotape. All right, another $10,000 check and the title Best New Junior Star of 1988 goes to. Count his form. Please welcome the Star Search Junior Vocalist Champion, Countess Vaughn. Countess, nice to see you here. Congratulations. Now, I get how'd you get the name Countess? Is that a stage name? No, my um dad, at first he was gonna call me Rebecca. But he changed it. He says, hmm, we need something flashy. So he called me Countess. Something showbiz? Yes. Now, now you won $20,000. Do you have a lot, of, are you, a lot of your friends now, better friends, looking for a little cash? <laughs> no. Now, are you going to sing a little song? What's your favorite song, you think? What the World Needs Now. What the World Needs Now. Is it love, sweet love? Are you going to do that for us yes. today? OK, ladies and gentlemen, you want to go on over and uh, we'll get a little, uh, hear a little of you singing. Here she is, singing on the Will Schreiner Show. Countess Vaughn. Countess? No! 
take a break. We'll be back with more of the show after this. Count us Vaughn. That was terrific. The Will Schreiner Show is brought to you in part by new dual action liquid vanish. New vanish cleans and freshens. For Vanish Drop-Ins, the Bull Brothers. I pop in Vanish Drop-Ins, it looks so clean. Yeah. So drop in Vanish Drop-Ins. Vanish Drop-Ins are here. Just drop one in the tank to help keep your bowl looking clean and smelling fresh for weeks. And since drop-ins dissolve completely, you never touch them again. What could be easier? So drop in Vanish Drop-Ins. And when you brush, try Dual Action Liquid Vanish. It freshens the bathroom and it outcleans Lysol on tough rust stains below the waterline. Liquid Vanish makes your toilet sing. Uh -huh. Have you heard? Honey, where's my parquet? Spread the word. Right in front of you. That parquet tastes you love. Parquet? Comes in a great big tub. Okay, parquet. Okay. Of all the spreads around, only one's got both no cholesterol and the buttery taste of parquet. Parquet spread. Hey, hey, okay, parquet. Okay. My baby, little Kool-Aid coolers. His brothers think he's square, but that's just his shape. All his drink box friends are squares, but my son's different. Always trying to be twice as good. He has 20% juice. That's twice the juice of the leading national drink box. Plus, he's all natural with added vitamin C. Oh, he gives me twice the joy. Kool-Aid Cooler's juice drink with twice the juice of the leading national brand. Mom, want to play catch? Want to play catch? Isn't he twice the fun? <laughs> Sometimes people ask me what it takes to make a soup this delicious. I tell them it takes a lot of time and a special knack. I just don't tell them whose. If you can't tell it from homemade, it's probably Campbell's home cooking. Have you ever seen homemade taste? Mm. With Prego, you see the basil. Mm. With the other leading sauce. I can't see it. With Prego, you see the oregano. Mm. With the other sauce. I can't see it. So why buy the other sauce? I can't see it. Prego, homemade taste. You can see it. Promotional consideration provided by... Announcing not-so-sloppy Joe Sloppy Joe sauce from Hormel. Nobody messes with us. Slender U, the no-pain workout salon everyone tries to copy, where customers lose inches while salon owners build their own businesses. Slender U. Call our 800 number today. Mazzola no-stick cooking spray is made from Mazzola corn oil and has no cholesterol. Cut calories and clean up with no stick. Hello, friends. Is your spouse a contortionist? Got a friend who can blow square rings? Sing? Make people laugh? Get a video camera and tape them and send it to our home video talent scout contest. The best tapes will be shown and the winners invited to guest on our show. Also, they'll appear at Hollywood's famous improvisation. You may just find the next Frank Sinatra, Pee Wee Herman, or Vanna White. Send your tapes to Home Video Talent Scouts, Will Schreiner Show, 5842 Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood, California, 90028. So, remember, send your videotapes in. It could be a whole big break show of videotapes, so keep sending them in. Right, Don? Absolutely. <laughs> <I wanna... laughs> well, we've run out of time, Boy, but I want to thank... That's begging, begging the people to watch. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of time, but I want to thank everybody who was here. and told the